Good morning, everybody. Please come to a comfortable seat on your mat. You can pad your mat with a blanket for warmth. And as you find your seat, take a few breaths just to move the spine in two directions. The inhale, opening the chest as you hold the shins or knees. The exhale, rounding the back, easily letting the head drop. Just allowing a little bit of mobility and fluidity with the breath and with the spine before we recline. Allow for a little bit of firm pressure through the soles of the feet. And let the breath be cyclical, smooth, and easy. When you're ready, slide all the way down onto your back, feeling the edges of each vertebra meet the mat. No rush. With each transition that follows, maintain the rhythm and the sweet quality to your breathing. And let it draw you in. As you lie back, just take a moment with your spine on the floor, feeling the shoulder blades hug the back of the heart. And then place the knees over the heel bones, one vertical line. Feet are about hips distance apart to begin. And then if it's comfortable, you can bring the inner edges of your feet together so that the knees and the inner thighs touch. And to begin with, draw your right knee into the right side of your body so that the thigh moves towards your navel. And then holding the right kneecap with the palm of the right hand, begin to take a few circles around the hip, allowing the inhale to sweep the knee gently out to the side and then towards the front of your mat and then towards your navel again. The exhale draws the leg in, the inhale sweeps the leg out. Just about three to five rounds moving out and then switch directions, moving the knee away from the body and then out to the side and then back in. The inhale, the leg moves away and the exhale, the leg draws out and back into the body. Try to keep the feet relaxed, but awareness in the soles of the feet and toes. So that the hip is continually to continuously softening with each movement. Now lift the leg, rotate your right thigh out, and then cross your right ankle just below your left knee onto the top of your left thigh. So a figure four stretch here. Some may call this a reclining pigeon pose. You can stay here for the duration of the next few minutes, especially if you're already feeling a lot of sensation in your inner right thigh or where your right hip socket wraps around the femur head. If not, you will eventually lift the feet up off of the mat and then wrap your hands around your left thigh. You can use your right elbow to widen the right thigh out at the root or at the center of the thigh, creating a little bit more intensity to the stretch. Now play around with the angle of your left shin and foot. For each person, depending on the mobility of your hips, there's a different position that may access the sensation in the hips and the inner thigh a little bit more appropriately for you. You want to feel as if this action is coming from the hip and not the knee. Remember that the knee is not inherently supposed to rotate in that way. If this is too much, just place your left foot back down onto the floor and resume the previous position. Now make sure that your breath stays smooth here. It's usually a good indicator that there is too much tension in the body when we forget to breathe. Now you can take this a little bit deeper. Option to straighten the left leg. Reach up through the left heel and maintain contact of your sacrum towards the floor. The sitting bones may lift a little bit, but try to keep the spine relaxed and level on the mat. Now, if that is okay, you do have the option to walk your hands up to wrap around your left calf muscle, 
And so we'll give a little bit more stretch to the hamstrings and the back of the knee. Do this only if it is appropriate for you. Again, you do not want to feel a burning or tugging sensation at the hamstring attachment. If that's okay, option is to bring the hands up to the back of the ankle or even to hold the foot with both hands. And make sure that the breath, again, I always come back to the breath because it is the guide. Make sure that the breath is smooth. The sacrum isn't lifted. And the bony protrusions at your low back aren't being dug into the floor. This should be comfortable, but it should consume your attention. Five to ten breaths there. Make sure the shoulders stay relaxed. Stay as long as you like. Ready, option to just bring the hands back to the thigh and draw the legs a little closer towards your upper body. Now this next stage is going to bring a little bit more sensation into both sides of the hips, okay? Option to reach your forearms underneath your right calf, wrap the elbows around the outer edge of the calf, bring the hands to the head. The left leg will extend up and you can bring the sole of that foot to the floor with a knee bent or Stretch the leg super long along the mat. Keep energy through the toes here. Mindful that this intensity isn't moving the sensation or the rotation into your right knee. You can stay curled up with your head, neck, and shoulders, breathing deeply into your abdomen. You can take a little rock. Sometimes rocking side to side reminds the body that it is okay to relax. Or... You can hold the right foot with both hands, keep the ankle flex, and bring the heel of that foot towards your chest or towards your forehead. This is a preparatory asana for Ekapada Shirshasana, which is all of the leg behind the head postures. If that is intriguing to you, there is the option, of course, here to bring the foot behind the head, maintaining that rotation of the inner thigh and noticing that this sensation isn't moving towards your knee and out of your hip. If you'd like a more relaxed variation, you can recline back. The distance of your heel away from your right seat here is going to increase the sensation, okay? So the further away it is from your right hip, the more opening there will be in that right hip socket. Be mindful that this isn't creating tension in your breathing, in your face, or in your chest region little pulsations of the foot towards the sternum or forehead you can make this a little bit more dynamic and less passive option to hold the right foot with the left hand curl the head neck and shoulders up off the mat and then try to bring that right shoulder inside your right knee this would be a preparation for a supine compass pose right? or supta Surya Yantrasana. Again, this would also prepare the body for Ekapada Shirshasana. It's nice here to release and take a moment crossing that right ankle over the left thigh. If the leg is extended, relax your right knee towards the floor, getting a little opening through that right hip flexor area as well. Deep breaths into the lowest part of your abdomen. find a sense of balance or equanimity, re-bend that left knee, pick the foot up, and then we're going to move towards a twist, just dropping the legs as they are towards the left side of the mat. Eventually, the sole of the right foot will meet the floor, and the outer edge of the left leg will meet the floor. You can use your left hand to the inner left, inner right thigh or inner right knee to guide the knee away from the upper body, getting a little bit more stretch to the inner thigh. If there's room, you can bring the right heel towards your left hip crease, somewhat like Half Lotus or Ardha Padmasana. If there's further room, you can wrap that left arm around the right shin and reach for the front edge of your left shin bone with the left hand. This will increase the stretch, but it will also create a sense of stability. 
so that you can relax the body a little more. The gaze can move over your right shoulder towards your right thumb. The eyes can close or you can keep your gaze steady on an external object. Notice the rotation all the way up through your spine here. And maybe your awareness of that rotation follows the path of your breathing so that as you inhale, you notice the upward spiral. And as you exhale, you follow the spiral down all the way to your pelvic floor. Now, as long as this is not in your knees, it remains in your hips, you can cross that left ankle over your right inner thigh or knee, somewhat close to full lotus, although we're not quite bringing that left foot into the right hip crease yet. Still in your twist, when it feels appropriate, you can bring the sacrum back onto the floor and level the shins with the ceiling. At this point, there is the option, if you're in that half lotus, to bring it all the way in or all the way into full lotus here. Right foot into the inner left hip crease, left foot into the inner right hip crease, drawing the knees close to the body. A second option would be to cross the front of your left shin, the very center of that shin, in front of the center of your right shin, somewhat like Sukhasana or easy pose, and then hold opposite feet with opposite hands. So the right foot would come to the, the left hand and the left foot would come to the right hand. So provide a similar stretch in the outer hip without as much strain as full lotus. Elbows draw wide, collarbones are wide. And then releasing the feet, draw the knees into the body or hold the front of the kneecaps with your hands. Provide a little resistance. So pressing the knees away from the body as you pull them towards you. Create a little vacuum seal for your breath and your abdomen. Just draw your attention down into the navel. And for a moment's pause, extend your legs like Shavasana or final relaxation pose. And just let your awareness move throughout your system. Settle where it does. Try not to move your thoughts in any particular way. Just notice them coming and going as you continue to anchor your awareness on the dissipating sensation in your body and your breath. Now moving to the other side, place the soles of your feet hip distance apart, knees over the heels. Spine is long. And then draw that left knee up into your upper body. We do the left side second because now we're affecting a little bit of sensation in that left side digestive tract or the descending colon. We want to do the ascending first and then the descending. When you're ready, begin those hip circles, holding the front of your left kneecap with your left hand and rotating the knee out on the inhale, down, in, up on the exhale. Three rounds this direction. And then you will switch sides. Again, the inhale moves the leg away from the upper body and the exhale draws it towards. The general idea is that inhale creates space and exhale is an opportunity to compress. your jaw and your eyes. Keep them relaxed and spacious. Now as you're ready, lift your left leg a little, rotate the inner left thigh out from the hip socket and then cross the ankle over the right thigh just below the knee. 
weekend, you can stay here if this is providing something interesting for you. The goal of asana isn't to overstretch. The goal of asana is to create a light and steady body so that we can move towards states of meditation, so that we can sit comfortably. And the hips are a primary role in that. If we overstretch and we create instability in our lower back or our SI joint, it actually makes it more uncomfortable to sit. So there has to be a balance here. Staying here, or if you're ready, simply interlace your fingers around your right thigh and draw that right foot off the floor, creating that deeper figure four or supine pigeon stretch. Finding the angle of your right shin that allows you to target the outer right hip and inner or outer left hip and inner left thigh. The left ankle and the right leg are pressing into each other equally. Breath should fill the abdomen and fill the chest, all sides. And the breath should empty from these places equally. As you're ready, you may choose to straighten your right leg. This will combine that outer left hip stretch, inner left thigh stretch, with an opening in the posterior line of the right leg, so the hamstring, the back of the knee, the back of the calf. sacrum stays towards the floor. There may be a slight lift, but make sure it's not creating discomfort in your low back. And then if the breath stays steady, and there is space for you to move, bring your hands up your right leg to interlace them behind your right calf muscle, threading the fingers together. Regardless of the shape you are in, remember you can always use your left hand or left elbow to widen that left thigh out a little more. Just make sure that your right side waist doesn't shorten in the process. And there is still more room. Again, option to bring the hands up to the ankle tendon on the right leg or to hold the right foot with both hands. Check in with yourself. What is the messaging going on in your head right now? Is there the perception that more is better? Maybe you challenge that today. That there is nothing here that you are trying to make more whole or more complete. You're just simply using the stretch of your body to bring awareness to places that have previously not been aware. As you're ready, release the ankle, the calf, or the thigh, bend the knee again. And then again, you can stay or thread your elbows around your left calf, hands to the forehead, straighten your right leg, and either bend the knee, bring the foot to the floor, or slowly extend the right leg, feeling that reach come all the way from your right hip. Hand, neck, and shoulders can stay curled up. There is activity in the right thigh. If it is more appealing to you to lie back, please do. You may give yourself a little scalp massage here, bringing the thumbs into the temples, reminding the space behind the forehead and the center of the brain to soften Soften and widen. And again, if there 
there is the desire to go further. Checking in with your motives. You may hold on to that left foot with both hands. And drawing the knee out to the side a little bit. You can lift the heel up towards your chest or towards your forehead. Again, that gentle preparation may not feel so gentle for you today. So take it at your pace. But that slightly more gentle preparation for Ekapada Shirshasana or leg behind the head. wrapping the left thigh towards the body. In later stages, the heel can come to the forehead or can come to the top of the head. If that happens, tuck the chin a little bit more in and then you can bring the ankle behind the neck. Again, this is not the aim of yoga, but it can be interesting. If you're working towards that reclining compass pose, Supta Surya Yantrasana, then when you are ready, you'll start to lift up again. Hold the foot with your right hand. Bring your left knee behind your left thigh or knee. And then use the leverage of that left arm to guide the left leg towards the floor on the left side of your body. So many lefts and rights. Check in with your breathing. If it becomes encumbered, take a moment's pause. Breathe first, then take shape. The aim here is to allow your breath to wrap around your body. So that the shape is simply an expression of your breathing. When you are ready, recline. Cross the left ankle over your right thigh with the knee bent or the leg extended and relax. Calm the breath down. our twist. Pick up your figure four again. Stretch the arms out wide and then let the legs drop in the figure four towards your right side. The gaze can stay steady to the ceiling or move out over your left shoulder. The right hand can be a lever to guide the left leg away from your body, away from your upper body. And then there is the option to bring the left foot into the right hip crease, much like Ardha Padmasana or Half Lotus, or to wrap or and <laughs> to wrap the right arm around your left shin and reach the hand for the front of your right ankle or shin, just creating a structure for your body to relax a little more. For some, the reaching of that arm will create tension though this may not be ideal. You can always bring the legs a little further away from the body. This will bring the twist down the spine a bit. strain in the knees, option to bring the right ankle in front of the left thigh, like that first stage before full lotus, staying in your twist. And then center the body, sacrum to the floor, taking full lotus on the other side, not the traditional way, so the left foot in the right hip crease and then the right foot in the left hip crease. 
or taking easy pose on your back. Easy pose is a little bit of a misnomer, especially if you have tightness in your outer hips, but the front of your right shin will now cross in front of the left shin. And you can hold the feet with your hands, or you can simply just let your feet relax and hold your knees. There's so much potential in the art of just allowing ourselves to explore a shape without an agenda, without an expectation that deeper in the pose is better, or without the judgment that we are incapable of going deeper. Again, always checking in with your intention, always checking in with your motives. your breathing. Can you smooth it out a little bit more? When you're ready, uncross the legs, draw the knees into the upper body as much as is comfortable. choose to bring the thighs close to the upper body in Pawamukkasana, the wind relieving pose. And then taking a moment's observation in Shavasana. Stretch the legs out long, take them wide. Take the arms out a little Take several breaths here. You don't have to count them. Just notice them. Now opening up the front of the hip. You'll take your block or if you have textbooks or something high like that. There'll be several levels, so the low level, the medium level, and the high level with a block can always be changed just by maneuvering it, as I'm showing here. But as you're ready, lift your hips and place the block either onto the low level, the medium level, or if you're very tall or very mobile, the higher level, underneath your sacrum, so that the entire sacrum and the point of the tailbone are supported. This is the medium level making sure that there is no strain in the low back. And again, if you're as tall like me, or pretty mobile, and the breath can stay steady, then the high level may do. So this is supported bridge, or Situ Bandhasana. It is a slight inversion. As you can see, the knees are over the hips and the hips is over the heart, are over the heart. You also have that Jalandhar Bandha that is forced, basically, just by the position of your body. To create a little bit more opening across the front of your chest, take cactus arms or goalpost arms out to the side. If there's any scar tissue in the chest, this may feel a little bit restrictive. But take it at your own pace, maybe bring the elbows a little closer towards the block than out wide. Now, if again, you have more room and you're curious, you can start to straighten your legs. What I'm doing here is playing around with the position of my heels to ascertain which is the best alignment for my pelvis so that I'm not bringing too much of a curvature in my low back, but I'm also not letting it depress too much so that there is almost a slumpy feeling in my abdomen. For me, that I, I find that parallel feet works best. For some people, turning the heels in and the toes out, a little pigeon-toed, will allow the pelvis to rise a little more. You decide what's best for you. Again, option to extend the legs. You may choose to extend the legs, but find that keeping the block at the height that it is, is too much. So, if that is the case, please allow yourself to place the feet down, lift the hips, and lower the block 
and then try extending your legs out. And very similar to Viparita Dandasana. Start to bring your attention into the heartbeat. As your breath begins to quiet, you may notice, you may have that awareness that the heartbeat has slowed from the first one when you stepped on the mat. Can you bring your awareness just into that space between the beats of the heart? Much like we notice the space between the sides of the breath. If there's any tension in the neck, it can be lovely to place a block underneath the back of the head. The low level often works. Or if you have any tension in the base of your skull, angle the block so that the beveled edge of the block comes into that ridge, that occipital ridge at the base of the skull. Taking Supta Baddha Konasana, a reclining bound angle, the legs in a diamond shape. The hands can come under the thighs for a little support, or they can come on top of the thighs for a little extra weight to assist gravity. You may also decide to place blankets or blocks under those thighs so that the angle is less severe. Now you've done a lot of opening of that inner thigh and inner hip, so it may be appropriate to simply extend the legs or even to bend the knees, feet to the floor, Widen the feet out, as I'll show you in a moment. Unbring the knees together. What this does is it widens the low back as it narrows the front of the hips. So it's just taking any potential compression out of the, of the bony plate, out of the sacrum. And when you find a position that is good for you, just breathe If you have been practicing Ujjayi Pranayama, take the sound down a few notches so that it begins to be only so loud that you are the only one who can hear yourself, even if you are surrounded by people in the room. And then maybe even a little bit quieter so that you actually have to seek the sound out. so that your heartbeat is actually louder than your breath, even though your breath is still smooth and steady. Here's the variation of my feet wide. And Shavasana, you can leave the block under your head if there's still tension in the neck, or remove it. But if you're ready for rest, if you're ready for corpse pose, please just stay here. And the point is not more shapes. And if you're taking Chavasana, begin to slowly release your awareness of your breathing. And follow the attention inwards to that space between the heartbeats. Maybe you even lose your awareness of the heartbeats as you just remain in the space between them. If you have found that there is a little comfort in the outer hip or the low back, you may take a supine twist here, bending your knees and just dropping them towards the right side. You can straighten that top leg or you can keep the knees bent.
And if you are taking that twist, your left shoulder may rise off the floor, that's okay. But to get a little bit more rotation in your upper back, you can lift your right shoulder and move it towards your knees. If you straighten the top leg, you may notice that there is more of an opening in the outer seam of the left leg that may be enjoyable after all of that. spine before you do. something advanced inherently about the process of slowing down and taking simple postures in a really concentrated way. If we've been practicing for a long time, we have built this sensitivity to the way that prana, the way that energy moves in our bodies. And we can come, become rather absorbed in that awareness. practice isn't necessarily more difficult asana or more difficult shapes. When you're ready, just bring your knees back to the center. And take a little hug, a little wrapping of the arms around the shin. Self gratitude or grace or compassion, whatever it is you need. And then extending out into Shavasana, if you've been in Shavasana, we'll all meet you here. And stay for at least another five minutes. Thank you so much for practicing. Have a lovely day. Namaste.